It's part three of building Batman's armory from Batman 1989. So there's quite a lot to do in this. So a quick run through. Uh, in part three, I will be building the vaults, then finishing off the rest of the scenery, and then painting, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the vault is gonna take quite a lot of time to build. But here's where we are so far. So we last left this in part 1.1, and I just was you know, fixing some uh, cracking in the clay. I've left some in, obviously, as you can see there, and uh, I will be extending this from the back to yeah, the top, just so it covers over the vault. Making it look like it's buried within the rocks. But that's where we're up to. So as I've already said, there's a loads to do, so uh, I shall be hanging around, and uh, let's finish this off. Right, here we go, it's part three. So for the vault door and for the main body of the vault as well, I will be using this, it's foam board and it is uh, laminated between uh, two plastic sheets. And I've just measured out there sort of the rough, well it's not rough, it's gonna be the final sort of size of the, uh, the main body of the vault. And on this particular section is when the, uh, you know, the door will be closing onto. So for part three, I will explain more at the end of the video, so please do hang around to find out. But I've recorded so much footage that I couldn't possibly uh, do this in one video, otherwise it'd be on for like an hour and a half. So that's obviously far too long for a video. So what I've done is I'm gonna split part three into two parts. Uh, this one for the door, because obviously there's a lot of detail and work going into this. And, and yeah, and then I'll do like part, three part two uh shortly afterwards but there we go i've just removed the uh the section there i've just drawn out use batman there as a bit of a reference point and now i need to draw around another piece there just so i've got uh, another piece to work off now this will be the door it's slightly bigger than the actual uh body of the vault and I've just used a, uh, a plastic tube just to measure out where certain parts are gonna go. But this does come in two parts of the door. So you've got the main sort of front of the door and then to the, well, it'll be our right-hand side. It's like an, a massive slab where the hinges will be going to. And this is what I'm doing here. So making some adjustments, uh, try my best to stick with the uh, 112 uh, scale here, but it's more or less there. And then there's a notch cut out of the door as well. I will be putting on pictures so you can see what I'm doing exactly. And again, just removing that half so I can use that piece on the door. Right, so now I've got things planned out. So let's see how it's looking so far. So obviously we've got the, uh, the exterior of the vault there. That bit will be in the interior, but we'll do that later. Then we've got the outside of the door, which just, it's just a little bit bigger than the, uh, you know, the whole of the vault. Then there's a big slab on the side, which will have the uh, hinges on for the, for the hinge. In the middle, there are like two tubular things that just sits in there. Next up, there are, I think they're roughly about there for now, I'll put there for now. I will deburr all these properly, just so like a rough guide for the moment. Actually, it's a bit higher up than that. Then there's a tube that goes in between these two. Probably spaces out a bit more so I can fit that in. And again, there are also two tubes that go across this way as well. And then there's some uh, brackets that hold everything down. So hopefully uh, we're almost there. I just need to redesign this piece so uh, I can add the hinges on. And then we're good to start gluing bits on and start to make this look more like a, uh, a vault. Right, just a little update. So I've made this. Uh, I will put up some reference pictures so you know what I'm on about. 
So basically, we've got these uh, two sort of uh, rods that go across the middle, and there's one that goes down, uh, which has the handle on, which I'll come on to in just a moment. It's pretty much there. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to glue anything in just yet. I need to make some adjustments to uh, these rods at this end. But that's how we're looking so far. Now for the middle piece here. So it's a little bit tricky because I've been struggling to find something suitable for that because the handle on the door isn't that big itself and I haven't really found anything suitable so I have come up with a solution which is this. So you may recognize this, you normally find these sort of things in pizza boxes to stop the box from falling on top of the pizza. So I mean it is quite big but I think just as a temporary thing I can just remove the legs and uh, just take out these middle pieces here and I think that will do for now as you know the handle thing that opens the door so that's what I'm gonna do now trim all this up and uh, place it on there and see how it looks there we go so I do tend to keep little pieces like this if I have a pizza or if I just happen to see something that, that's quite interesting then I do tend to have a little box and keep these things in so I was quite pleased that uh, I had this it, I said it's, it's a little bit too big but I don't think it looks you know ridiculous it's uh, I think it can work and I'll, I'll probably will just keep it on there to be fair it looks pretty good um, you'll see that as uh, you know we keep building this thing it was quite tricky to cut out uh, even though it was quite soft plastic obviously it's quite small so uh, I was a bit worried it might slip or cut my fingers or damage the piece a bit more there we go so I've done a uh, one gap there so <laughs> taking a while obviously it's um, quite thin but uh, again it takes a bit of force to get you know this through and obviously I don't want to slip and uh, either cut myself or cut through the, uh, the rest of this so I'll carry on and we'll come back once it's done Right, so it's finally there, as you can see, uh, all hollowed out. Now, as I say, this isn't ideal because it's not really to scale with everything else, but I think as a temporary thing, that looks all right. I will keep my eye out for something in the future to replace this with, but uh, yeah, it's just gonna be a bit of a, a, bit of a massive uh, handle wheel turny thing, I guess. But that's where we are. Obviously, I need to cap these off and then add these. Well, I've no idea what they are, but there's one at the top, there's one at the bottom. And then there's just the bits on the side, which goes on the other, on the other side of the vault. And then there's some brackets that go uh, either end of these rods. And then there's some more brackets just next to there and at the bottom of this one. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to glue anything down until everything's painted. So I'm going to go away now and make these brackets and uh, see where we are. For the hinge, I think what I'll do, I will use this piece and then add the hinge later on because I need the side panel on so I, I can you know, hang the door properly. Uh, but yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. So let's carry on. Okay, so I'm now gonna commit to gluing stuff down. I made two brackets, as you can see there, and I'm gonna be using these for the rivets. They're um, half pearls, uh, they're very cheap. They were about uh, one pound for like 100 of them. Uh, so they look pretty good as rivets. But anyway, so I'll start gluing stuff down. Now, I will, at the end of all this, put down like a product list of what I've used. But for this, uh, for like the tubes, uh, I used a uh, material made by, I think it was Evergreen, which is a US company. Uh, it's quite easily available from most sort of modeling stores and shops. Uh, but that's what I use for the wider tube and the thinner tube. And then the foam boards I got from my local craft store. So I'm just using super glue. Uh, I didn't use the glue gun because it's just too messy. And uh, I don't need an awful lot of super glue just to keep these down. And once the paint's on as well, that'll help keep everything stuck down. But those two tubular things are now secured in place. 
and I've done the smaller tubes as well, which is the mechanism to open the door. I'm just now gluing down, uh, I don't know what they are again, there's, there's some sort of bracket to keep everything in place. And then I'm going to start putting in the half pearls. Now, there's 16 all in all, I did count them, and I'm trying to space them out as evening as I can, but I do make a small error, which I do correct later on, but uh, I forgot to put in the two other brackets that go to the left-hand side, just where my hand is now, and there's supposed to be a bracket there, and then one further down as well, but it's okay, they come off quite easily, and... Um, yeah, so that was got sorted in the end. But 16 of these larger ones. And then I will do some smaller ones around some other areas as well. These were quite fiddly to uh, put on, actually. I did try using tweezers initially, but uh, I just couldn't get them on. So in the end, I just used the, uh, and the knife there and I put them on the end and just carefully put them on as best as I could and sometimes just use my fingers as I'm doing there just because it was just a bit easier sometimes now I start work on the brackets I've put on a little half pearl as well on the end of that uh, handle but I need to work on this bracket so I just use uh, I don't know who made this it's just a very thin piece of plastic like sheets it's very cheap like 99 pence or something like that and I just cut them out because I don't want them too thick. So I just wanted a thin piece on there just so I had that bracket shape. And I'm just putting on some more half pearls. Probably the second larger ones of the packet I'm putting in there. Now these are supposed to be hex nuts, but I did have a look at some uh, like M1 sized hex nuts and they just didn't look quite right. They're a bit too big still, but these half pearls will do just fine. Right, so a bit of a cut there to where we're up to at the moment. So I've just added, um, I forgot to add the brackets for this side, so I've had to m move these uh, pearls around to get those in, and I'll add a band around there later. I've capped off the ends, as you can see there, and at the top as well, I need to add another, like uh, one of these half pearls on the top and on the bottom. Otherwise, that's the front, more or less done, apart from painting, of course. So now it's just the back to do. Oh, and obviously I've added uh, some tape around the edges there. So when I do paint it, the, uh, you know, we'll spray paint it. It's not gonna melt away the foam. But yes, yeah, okay, the back. So I need to fit a few pieces on here so then it can store all the accessories. And uh, yeah, then the door will be ready for painting. Okay, so that piece I was saving from later, I've just made it just a little bit too, a little smaller, so it would actually, when I close the door, it will fit through, because that will be going on to the back of the main door that I just made. And then on top of that, I'll be placing another like foam section where the, well, all Batman's gadgets will be stored. Okay, so let's work out what goes in the back of the door. So I've looked at loads and loads of reference photos and it's quite simple. So in the back of the door, we do have the battery that sits at the top. Below that is the uh, the gauntlets grapnel gun thing, which sits just underneath it like so. Underneath that, I believe it's a detonator uh, although I can't remember off the top of my head, but that sits underneath there. And then there are a couple of throwing stars beside that, but uh, the Mezco one only comes with one throwing star, so I might just have to use the one for now and then use something else. There are throwing stars with the Beast Kingdom figure, but I think they'll be too big, but I will get them out and have a look. And also, in the picture, the Grapnel launcher is, is assembled, but these two parts are separate, so I'll have to have that uh, as one thing like that. I could have the uh, the actual hook part just sitting above. Also have the other sort of uh, you know 
put together grapnel launcher, which I could have underneath, I suppose. And then all I'm left with is another battering and a uh, you know a hook with some wire on. So I don't think I'll use the hook with the wire on, but I might put in two batarangs just to fill the space, like so. So I'm going to go and check and see if I do actually have uh, any more throwing stars. Right, so he does come with throwing stars, three, but they're way too big, it's just not going to work. So uh, I'll find another batarang though, so that could go in there as a three. And I do also have just one smoke bomb. But again, in the picture, there's three, and that just sits right at the bottom, so it's quite small. I'll try and fit it in there, but uh, it's small and it'll probably fall out. So I'm now going to make a oval-shaped piece and fit all these on, and I think that'll be the back more or less done. Now for this back piece where the uh, weapons will be stored, I'm not 100% happy with it, um, but it is quite difficult to get this right because they are quite small pieces, as you can see in the pictures here. Um, I mean, it'll look, it'll look fine. I mean, I'm going to have it sort of ajar anyway with Batman's suit just sitting in the uh, in the vault there. But I'll try my best to get this looking nice. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. Once I've you know, completed the back section, I think it will look perfectly reasonable. But yeah, so. I lay those out again, and now I'm going to cut out a piece of foam to fit in between those pieces. So I have been freehanding a lot of this, you know, the curves, uh, just because, well, I couldn't find my uh, compass to do the circles, but it doesn't really matter so much because I quite like to own freehand. It gives it a bit more of a rustic nature to it. Well, that's my excuse anyway. So I'm using the XPS foam like I used on the initial uh, scenery build, just because I quite like the uh, the lines that go down the side. And uh, me being me, I actually did this upside down and the wrong way around, so I had to go back and uh, do it again. Plus you might notice the corner there isn't uh, quite matching the other side, so I just uh, sort that out. But there we go, fit that in. Okay, I think we're pretty much there. So on the back, you can see I've added some more uh, layers. There's the uh, the part that holds all the equipment. I've just filled in the edges there just to hide some uh, openings, but I will get rid of all these overspills around the side once it's dried off a bit. And yeah, we're gonna go away and paint this thing as soon as that's dry. So there are some hinges that need to go on either side of here. But I'll add those later. I want to make sure that this thing will hang properly from the uh, you know, the main body of the vault, rather than sort of second guess it and find out I've got problems later. It won't be much of a problem. I just got to add those on and paint them in uh, as and when. So once that's dry, I'll go away, paint this, and uh, we'll come back and see how it looks. So while the door is away drying, I thought it'd be a good idea to start painting the scenery. So I'm using the same paints I used on the Batcave build, the last one. And although it looks dark initially, uh, it's just like, you know, a primer coat, a base coat, just for me to work off. I will be uh, adding more lighter colours onto this a bit later. But I thought I'd just, you know, while I was waiting for that to dry, just to get ahead of myself and get this painted. So I'm just using just a very simple acrylic paint. Uh, it'll do a far enough job and I will be using uh, various sprays and other acrylic paints on the rocks a little bit later but yeah as you can see just a simple process of uh, carefully painting I am using a small paintbrush for the job uh, that's just more to do with making sure that I get inside all the little crevices because you always get a space that you miss whereas this brush I'm using you know it will hopefully cover everything up which I think it did pretty much but uh, the odd speckle of white here and there isn't really a matter because it will be covered up a bit later anyway with some more paint but uh, yeah so far so good and here is the door after painting it's had two coats, uh, as you can see there, it's tripled there um, a little bit, a bit up there as well, but uh, I'll come back to that a bit later. 
Uh, for the back, um, I have painted around the edge, but these sides, we'll put the masking tape in. I need to remove that and put something more permanent there. And of course, I need to fill in all these bits and tidy up in general. But let's just focus on the front for now. So the next job is I'm going to be using this, which is a pigment. It's a black soot, obviously, there. And what I'm going to do is just use this to uh, just darken some areas. Uh, especially around the uh, rivets. So uh, let's go and do that. For this, I'm using two brushes, uh, a soft one and a sort of a firmish one, just to initially get it in. But uh, let's see how this will look. So the main reason of using this uh, pigment is, all the paint is pretty good, apart from the splodge in the middle there. Uh, you know, it is a bit shiny and I really want to dull it down a bit. This will take probably a couple of, or well, say layers, you know, it's just going to sit on the top and then I'm going to uh, use some MAC sort of uh, sealer to uh, seal everything in. But I'll be working around, especially around the rivets, just to make them a bit more duller in colour and the handle and just sort of the uh, other joints and things just to give it a bit more depth because it's just a little bit too plain just being all that one color but it's quite simple just brush it on and uh, it will yeah hopefully remove some of that sheen off the uh off the parts there uh, i think it looks pretty good so i said it'll probably need a couple of applications but uh i can do that in between videos so uh i can get on with the rest of the build in the next one I think what I'll probably do is I'll probably just go in there with some, uh, you know, like just wet some of this pigment up and just put it in some of the other spaces just so it uh, works a bit better. I really do like this stuff, but uh, yeah, I think it needs just a little bit something else, just a little bit something else, and this will work really nice. There we are, just giving it like an initial uh, brushing over just to take away some of the shine. It needs, you know, a bit more work, but. Uh, that's a good initial covering. And that is the end of part three. So basically I've recorded so much stuff that I couldn't possibly fit it all into this one part. It would be well over an hour long. I mean, well over like an hour and 20 minutes, which is far too long for a video. So I've decided to split part three into two sections. So I have built more of this stuff, but you know, I didn't want to cut stuff from this video to fit it all in. I'd rather do two extra parts or you know, do an extra part. So uh, this is what I've done. But anyway, so here's the door. It's gonna sit roughly in this sort of position. Obviously I need to continue painting this up a bit more, but uh, overall it's come together quite well. Also, I have the electrics to install as well. I've got those ready just for the light inside. Otherwise, I think uh, it's going pretty well. Just need to do some repair jobs on the uh, door there. Basically that sort of drip mark down there, I'll get rid of that. And uh, just blend in a bit more of that black soot just to dull it down a little bit. So, in the next part, uh, yeah, it will be finishing off the rest of the vault, uh, building up the rest of this wall and then painting, and then it will be done. So thank you very much for watching. If you do enjoy my content, please do consider subscribing. And until the next one, I'll see you later. It's Matt in the retro room. Join Matt in the retro room. Watch Matt in his retro room. Subscribe for more and stay tuned.